over. Last mission, last mission. The final boss mode. Yeah, yeah, what's good, yo? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where as always, it shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, Pat Scorpion, the New England representative, and as always, I got my man with me, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do, LB, Lauderdale, Boss, the Soul Wars, the, 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 the Shuttle Group, the God, the GOAT artist, Ring Gang. Yes, sir, bringing in the house forever and always, and as always, I got my other man with me, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey yo, hey yo, what up, what up? You already know, this is your boy King P, Bodega P, Bodega Box in the building. Let's get it. I'm a little tired, but I'm ready. I'm like, I got no excuses. My name not Deontay Wilder. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, P's above ground today when he's not out there fighting the foot. You know what I'm saying? He's chilling, you know, in his in his abode somewhere in uh, New York City. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, man. So yeah, we got two topics we're about to talk about tonight. Uh, the second one we'll talk about, well, obviously, because you know there's a, an addendum on basically the Wilder, you know, on the Wilder Fury rematch uh, aftermath. Uh, it's very interesting, you know. Now, you, you one would think that I mean, we've done a lot of Wilder videos in the last couple of weeks, and you know we would think, oh, we're not going to touch another Wilder topic for a while, but you know, you know, never say you know, box in the theater of the unexpected. So yeah, something else has come up today that warrants some more conversation about it and we'll get to that but uh but yeah there's also a card this saturday and most people are either are not and surprisingly they're not talking about it like you know on youtube not like it's very get it's barely getting to mention why because of the aftermath of uh tyson fury deontay wilder heavyweights i mean this is what happens when you have a significant heavyweight fight and it has an unexpected result, and it's a decent I'm fight. spoiled for a heavyweight epic fight. Yeah. I mean, this is probably the closest you get to an epic heavyweight. Well, not since, you know, Anthony Joshua and Vlad Klitschko. I mean, that was epic to me, at least. Um, yeah, I mean, that should have been epic to everybody, but... <laughs> you know, some so some people... Some people were like, no, I hated this shit. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but um, yeah, but yeah, this uh, because of that, I mean, heavyweight fuckery is at an all time high, so it's naturally it's out shining damn near everything else in boxing, including this particular card, um, that will be shown on the zone. Um, the heavyweights overshadow everything when when the heavyweights are good, they overshadow everything. Like, I, I feel like it would you would need like a, a like a bigger name fight this weekend <clears throat> to even. Comfort, like to even hold up to all this shit going on with Wilder and Fury, right? And, and, yeah, and, that, and, it's, uh, and it's unfortunate too. That's why it's a good card on paper. You know, it's not the type of that will be like steal your attention away off rep. Because as we all know, in boxing, fuckery sells. In social media, fuckery is the thing. Everyone likes to look at, listen to fuckery. You know, it's, yeah. it is what it is. And y'all, y'all can see the engagements from if you um. And shout out to Break Media and uh, Jay Chowder. With, yeah. Uh, with the engagement info and uh, numbers behind all the posts and social media posts from Wilder and uh, Fury. So, you know, people loving the fuckery. Yeah, it is. You see the proof. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not even really the fight. It's I mean, Although the fight had plenty of mention, you know, had plenty of, you know, there were people, you know, there were things about the fight that people were disgusted about. Like, you know, Fury going full gypsy, you know, the looking the blood thing, the tongue thing, <laughs> the singing of American Pie, you know, all types of wild shit, you know, in, on top of the ass whooping, you know, that was the memorable moment for <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was, there was so many moments of fuckery that people just were just like, that's why, you know, people can't really stop talking about that fight. Yeah, even and, though you and, got the return of Mikey Garcia. Yeah. Mikey versus... Garcia. Everybody's um, Mexican. I'll be competitive with you. Decision losing or winning, Jesse or Vargas. Jesse Vargas, yeah, and it's it's an, actually it's a good fight. I mean, the only thing, I mean, yeah, because I mean we all know. I mean, Mikey though is coming off obviously probably the worst performance of his career and a fight which I the worst pay per view of our career. <laughs> 
or one of them, you know, there there have been some piss poor pay per views for sure. Yeah, I mean, like damn, like that was up there with uh, Danny Williams and Vitaly Klitschko, or Canelo and Angulo. <laughs> oh Lord, okay, yeah. <laughs> I went back. You just went forward. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for that shit. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> See, you remember that bullshit. Yeah, no, I, I remember that bullshit because uh, you know, I was about to I was trying to support Carlos Malik because he was facing one of the Charles. He was about to defend his belt, but you know, you know, they they call him in the dressing room and you know because he had some uh, he had some issues with some minors supposedly, and you know he got deported to Mexico uh, where he's still residing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but the but the Mikey Spence one was really fucking bad because that one was supposed to be was 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 hyped up as a competitive fight between two talented guys just coming into a different weight class and that shit was a dud. The only offense we got from Mikey was at the end of the round when he raised his fist up in the air. Pumping stuff in the air, going to the corner. <laughs> yeah. I could punch the clouds. <laughs> I'll do something. Yeah, I, 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 I was shitting on this fight like it was like I was going out of style. Yeah, because I, I was like, yeah, no, this isn't a fight. Like this, like this shouldn't be. And I mean, the reason why it came to be because Mikey has, for, for Mikey has pretty much been a businessman in boxing these days. But for some reason, do wants some wants a welterweight belt. He wants the title in the fifth division, um, and that's the whole reason. And then that's the whole reason why he pretty much sold his zero to PBC for the shot. <laughs> Just it, sold the zero. Yeah, I mean, this that is sounds one of, like a Charles Martin line. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Here's my, here's my belt, sir. Yeah, you know, take, take my fancy zero too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then obviously, I mean, I was in the—I watched this in the movie theater, and I was just like, you know, this was, this is, this is horseshit. Like, this is complete horseshit. And and um, we had, and look, it was, it was a boring night. It was a boring fight. And um, yeah, we didn't see no knockout or a knockdown. Well, yeah, and then you know, I expect welterweight boogeyman to destroy. Um, lightweight, you know, sp- pound for pound boxer puncher specialists that are naturally smaller, right? <laughs> I, mean, I pick Mikey to win. Like, yeah, I ain't, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, mm. you know, but uh, the the fight, I mean, Spence pulled a fast one on everybody with how he fought that night. So, oh yeah, too. no yeah. one pictured that. Yeah, you know, and yeah, and. Yeah, the fight got, you know, got booed and, you know, shit on as it rightfully should. And Mikey, and Mikey had not fought since then. Um, Disappeared, was, really. Yeah, I mean, that was like, it, it, it was almost a year ago, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, now, and it's not like Mikey, and right now it's sad that we're actually used to Mikey taking his breaks like this. So, it's like... You See, know. no one cared this time because it's like he got shut out. So it's yeah. like, eh, take your time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's not even seen like in a, in a pound for pound sense, even though technically he probably still is, but we don't know in, in what length. <laughs> I mean, he pound for pound, just not pound for pound top ten. Yeah, yeah. No, like, if you want to put him in top fifteen, you know, that's fine. Yeah, but, yeah. But definitely not. Yeah, this is the thing. You can't like I look at pound for pound different now. Like you, these guys, they fight so infrequent that. If you fight in once or twice a year and it's a garbage opponent or it's somebody you lose to or I mean that kind of knock you down like like even Usyk like he's pound for pound quality but I wouldn't have him in a pound for pound top ten now yeah because he's it, cause, yeah because yeah I understand because he's fighting like injuries he, every time you know injuries get injured all the time for some odd for some odd reason you know but you know I I definitely understand that LB for sure. Um, you know, I mean, but yeah, I mean, if we do a pound for pound, me, yeah, I mean, yeah, his ability's pound for pound, I me. Mean, I mean, he's going up from featherweight to you know getting the title at one forty. So I mean, it's a good candidate for that. However, you know, like I said, it's it's sad though that he's like a businessman these days and he doesn't fight frequently as he should. You know, so basically he's going into this after almost a year out of the ring against Jesse Vargas. Um, Jesse Vargas is an interesting guy. Um, 
I mean, he. I mean, if there's one person that has taken advantage of signing to match room and being on the zone, it's him. I mean, for the most part, since he signed up, on it, I mean, he's been entertaining, highly entertaining fights. The Delorme He's fight. been with everybody too, like PBC yeah. top rank. Yep, he's yeah, been man. passed around quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, he gives good fights and, and good, good account of, uh, accounts of himself each time. You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the man's been in the ring with both Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley Jr. Pacquiao, of course, the pay-per-view. He's been in the ring with Adrian Broner, a fight he should have won, and he's been. But the he ring. got hands put on him in the last six rounds, so it was a rightful draw. Yeah, I PBC also had a, a rightful draw. No, nah, that wasn't even a PBC draw. That was a rightful draw. Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> Don't, don't listen to Pat when he comes to some certain fighters, because you know man, he'll have you that. thinking Vargas shut the man out. Man, fuck that. No, I, I had it was a close, but I thought, I thought Vargas won that damn fight. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. What's the score? It, what? If it, if it's past one fifteen, one thirteen, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, no, I, no, no, I, no, I no, can no. see it. I can see seven five Vargas, but no it, more. I, I, think, I think it was like I think it was like one fifteen, one fourteen. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. All right, Larry Merchant, on your even ass round. <laughs> Yeah, nigga. but either way, like I mean, that that that, that was the beginning end for Adrian Broner, and that was Vargas. Vargas' profile was high. Then of course he goes to clash the match room, and he he damn near gets a PBC ball. draw with Delorme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is the which is the, I mean, it doesn't make sense. You have Broner and you have Delorme in the Delorme fight. He should have lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That was a PBC. <laughs> yeah, he brought that PBC draw to uh, the zone. Yeah, but then, the, but then after that though, he didn't. I mean, he's only fought ever since the limit, only fought once against Humberto Soto at 154. In that fight, I mean, that was on the undercard of um, you know uh, King Sor and um, uh, what the fuck am I thinking? Uh, Juan, oh. There we go. Juan uh, Estrada. Yeah. I mean, shouldn't even be forgetting his boxing skills are too, too cerebral. Them counter punching in combination, nah. I'm gonna put respect on his name. Yeah, no, no doubt. But I mean, Jesse Vargas didn't necessarily look that good in that fight either, because he got hands put on him until he, you know, wildered he, himself out. Yeah, wildered himself basically. And this is a nigga with like 11 KOs having to do that. So now, basically, now the now the the, the background is set. The scene is set. Um, how do you guys think? How do you guys see Mikey Garcia, Jesse Vargas going? I mean, Mikey's gonna. Mikey should put hands on him, but he should get hands put on him as well. Yes, but I'm trying to think how many hands though. So <laughs> <laughs> it just I don't think they, the punches might not affect Garcia like that. It might not affect Vargas like that either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, cause Mikey punch sharp, like. Yeah, but I think uh, Mikey. I mean, if it was at, if this was at one forty, I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah he's I'd, a yeah. he's a sharp puncher at the lower weights, but at the 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 uh, jury's still out on how he how he'll do at one forty seven with punching, cause we barely saw him fucking throw a punch in the last fight, so in his debut, so. <laughs> I mean, he can't hit any. He can't. Any, he can't punch any less than damn Tim Bradley, who was out boxing uh, Vargas. True. Out. Yeah, I mean that's true though. But let me Vargas though as far as high as one fifty four though. So it could be a good. It could be a. We could actually see Vargas being able to absorb Mike Garcia. Uh, Mikey Garcia's punches with little to no effect. That's that's a big possibility. I don't know about all that. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, personally, I mean, in Vargas, I mean, dude is five eleven. Dude is, has at least was a four or five inch. Yeah, but he, he he doesn't look that big. Like like he doesn't look that big when I see him. I don't know. He looks like a small. I don't know how it's possible to be a small five eleven, but he doesn't look five eleven. Yeah, like five eleven. Damn, he's taller than me. Yeah, he looks more <laughs> like five nine than fucking five eleven. Never heard of this five eleven before. Like when you say five eleven, I'm thinking like you getting in the Kermit Centron, Robert Easter level, like. Yeah, I think they taller than that. So, damn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I'm saying though, because I mean, Vargas does, I mean, does have a size advantage. So, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Vargas also gives Mikey some trouble. Yeah, 
anyway, yeah. I mean, they're both, they're, they're both Mexican. So, I mean, if anything, we, we, we do expect hands are going to be thrown for sure. Yeah, I think um, you're going to get a good back educated, back. educated hands. I think we'll get educated hands being thrown. Yeah. Yeah, because Mikey's not, Mikey's not the type to actually go, you know, crazy with this. Well, the Vargas will. <laughs> That's for damn sure. I think Vargas might put him into a fight. And, and I think Vargas. Mikey Garcia is going to oblige him because the last time he was out, you know, you can't have another dud like that. No, you can't. Especially against no damn Jesse Vargas, you know, because the, the way it's set, you have to look better than Broner did. <laughs> Facts. Especially since you beat Broner. Facts. True. Yeah, so I mean, so yeah, I mean, I, I could I could see this being a one fifteen, one thirteen type of decision for Mikey. I mean, I, I do think it is going to be close. Uh, I see it like a, uh, I see like a one seventeen, one eleven. Yeah. You think it's going to be that sharp after a year off against? Jessica? No, I mean, no, I, I think. Well, I mean, I could see that just because because you know the car because Mikey's the A side, he might get the A side. Scorecards, but I—I I mean, I could see that better. I, I think that it'll be a competitive fight, but I don't think. I think it'll be clear, Mikey. Hmm. Oh, like a good, like an old-fashioned uh, El Terrible, Eric Morales type fight. Basically, yeah. You know, action pack, but you know, a clear guy that's better. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's good. Like, like, just mix it up a little bit more for the fans. I don't know. Like, like I, I don't consider one seventeen. Like, I know when, when, when you heard me say that one seventeen. One, I don't really consider that like a blowout because you can still have you can still have a competitive fight and it just be, you know, the score. Yeah, it's just because one guy just didn't win the majority of the rounds, but you know he can still give a good good account of us account of him himself. True. Yeah. Because I actually think it'll be. More in the lines of that than you know 115, 113. You can't, I, it's a bad look if you're Mikey Garcia and you're beating Vargas at 115, 113. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I get the layoff and all that, but we've seen Vargas get hands put on him before, and, and you know, some of the wins he had, they could have gone the other way. Yeah, there's, there's I mean, plenty even, of them. even with the long layoff, he has been in the gym. Like, so it's not like he's been like away from a gym. Yeah, like. but a nigga who don't like boxing being in the gym and a guy who loves boxing being in the gym is like two different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. sure. So it's basically, I mean, basically we're going to see if Mikey's, you know, in, uh, in activity will catch up to him. But like I said, but Jesse Vargas hasn't fought in a while either. So I mean, not a year off. Yeah. But shit, I think we should. It's possible that this could be a draw type of fight. Yeah. But oh, I, I, feel like, I feel like Mikey should get it like on some one sixteen, yeah. one twelve. Yeah, and, and we can't even call it a PBC draw. You gotta call it a the, the zone draw. I, I, I don't even know if the zone has their own draw protocols. <laughs> nah, they, they got a little different fuckery. They. Yeah. Let me see. Like. Have they, they? I don't know. The zone's giving us maybe a wide variety of things that go on. It's hard to yeah, just. Yeah, I can't. No, the zone, no, the zone's give us, giving us more bad refing than bad scorecards. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could agree. But, but they do have some draws because that fucking. Oh, um, um, well, no, that was, was that. Nah, I'm trying to think. Uh, Katie Taylor won that fight with Pursuit, right? That wasn't yeah, a draw. Sure wasn't, yeah, that wasn't a draw. Yeah, yeah. They, oh, yeah they, they don't have the draw, they just have the damn. Yeah, like the Jesse Vargas. Like, yeah, like Jesse Vargas. Dome was a draw, and then obviously it was a draw because that was their first event, and Jesse Vargas is their marquee fighter, and they couldn't have Delorme, you know, getting getting a decision over him. But it was a close enough fight, you know, because they both uh, scored. Uh, wasn't didn't they? It wasn't Mungia Hogan on on the zone. Yeah, that's that's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, yeah. they don't do the draw. Like, they just do the full <laughs> robbery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just do the full, full blown bad decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least, at least PBC kind of just kind of, you know, ease you into it. Like, okay, you know, we gonna reuse these guys later and build them <laughs> up for other people. So yeah, Trout, Goucher, draw. <laughs> <laughs> and now, with Trout's layoff, he could come back and fight anybody and be like, and we'll be like. 
Hmm, well, you know, he got a draw against his young up and comer last time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's what they do. You know, the, the zone might be a little different because they, they, you know, they want the big, they want the bigger fights. They yeah. don't have that that roster where they could say, "I, right, um, you're gonna be, we're gonna intertwine your path with his trajectory." So we'll make you look good so he could be good so you could be good for him, but you're gonna lose against him. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes, you know, people flip the script, like uh Rosario and um uh J Rock. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's like, nah, I ain't taking this fucking PBC draw shit. Fuck all that. <laughs> enough boxing. I know how y'all niggas do things. <laughs> Pressure, jab, body shots. Who are you kidding? <laughs> oh man so i mean yeah i mean obviously we all i mean we do think it's gonna be a good fight hopefully it does live up to it you know um like because i mean obviously in terms of like actual good fights i mean it does have it does have five of year potential on paper you know but uh um, yeah it's, only because of layoffs and shit yeah <laughs> and, and neither one really steps back so like when you when I look at boxing, we already got a classic heavyweight fight or event. Cause I don't know that wasn't much of a fight. Yeah. So we got a classic heavyweight event. So so in all, you know, we, we need a Mexican standoff. Let me be honest. We do. That's that's the next thing that we need. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we'll get it with these two. Um but I I I would say 116, 112, Mikey Garcia. Word. Yeah, and all of us got like different scoring cards, but it's like <laughs> going up yeah. the level and shit. Yeah, but, 15, um, 113, 116, 112, 117, 111. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it is. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Vargas, uh, Garcia, don't disappoint us. You know, I, I don't want to have to go, we don't have to do a recap episode where I'm shitting on this event. Yeah, we, we don't need two duds in a row <laughs> from Mikey Garcia. The only, the, only, the only thing is, I think. Oh yeah, that, that, I forgot. This is Mikey's on a one fight deal. So if if this his own fight is a dud, then he might not be brought back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because they might make this like the Pacquiao tryouts. Yeah, exactly. And man, I, I really don't care about seeing a Pacquiao, Mikey Garcia fight. Nope, me neither. I mean that's the wrong Garcia in my opinion, but um okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But um yeah, and also too, I mean, outside the main event, I mean there are two other fights on there, two other fights on the main yes. card that are you know that are interesting on paper as well. Chocolatito Yeah, Chocolatito will get another shot at regaining uh, a flyweight a super flyweight title. Against champion WBA champion Cal Yafai, who is undefeated, and you know, he, although his reign, his reign has not been as great. I mean, because I mean, there have been. I mean, one fifteen at one time was a, and probably still is, was a very deep division. And I mean, that, that was that was that was what we call it. Was, it was a division of fades. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, there were there were people they were, moved up, retired, fell back. It's kind of spread out through several divisions now. Exactly, you know, and you know, and he's one of the last stalwarts up there. But he's the one that doesn't. He didn't get in the mix like you know, like that. So I mean, so he's preserved for the most part. He's, he, probably, he's the Mike McCullum of the. <laughs> <laughs> except you know, except he's the one that's doing the avoiding. They're not avoiding him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, which is a, which is so, somewhat a myth too, because you know the timing wasn't right for all of them dudes. Yeah, allegedly. I mean, for Hearns, yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, Hagner wasn't going to fight no damn McCullum, bro. You couldn't... Really? Yeah. <laughs> Leonard, like, really? Well, Leonard, I mean, Leonard, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, truth be told, I mean, Leonard did cherry pick a lot, you know, once after the retina injury. I mean, that's... After a retina injury in the 80s. Yeah, man. And it caught up to him, too, eventually. <laughs> I mean, hold on, and, 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 and we got the nerve to even say that uh, he been cherry picking after the retina injury when when he didn't fought Hagler off a damn five year layoff. Well, yeah, because you know, because um, the Beast and you know, damn him had damn near had a, a war 
So, you know, yeah, that's yeah but still, doing. like, bro, like, that's come on, like, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. are we, are we doing this? Nigga, it's the truth, like, nigga, I mean, I love oh, wait, 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 okay, time out, time out, time out. Hold on, so, so, w- w- what are we doing? We're faulting Sugar Ray Leonard for that fight? I'm not faulting, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just stating what it is, it's facts, I mean, we all know. I mean, well, well, hold on, what's the fact here, like? The facts was, Hagler went, got into a war with John the Beast Mugabe, a brutal war at that one, and dude thought he was, Hagler was slowing down after that, so that's what he thought he was right for the taking. That's exactly yeah, okay. As a as a guy come as a naturally smaller guy on a layup. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, that that hasn't fought that didn't fight in like five years. Come on now, like dude, like like that's what I'm saying. Like we really going here. Like we really yes. <laughs> like that's one of the know, greatest comebacks. Like how how you cherry picking when you when you've been on the couch? Like couch potatoes. That's what I'm saying. Like couch potatoes can't cherry pick, <laughs> bruh. At that point, you just want them to eat fruits. They just take any cherry, like. Nigga, that is a fucking pick. That's cherry pick if I ever saw it. Nigga, no, no. Ring Gang poll tomorrow on Twitter. Did Sugar Ray Leonard cherry pick Hagler? I will make sure to do that. You sure did. Because I cannot believe I'm hearing this from someone of your age and esteem. It sure did. I, 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 I fully Jeez. agree with that. Because like I said, it's not, it's not his only instance of being of the of the picking. It's not his oh, only instance. Oh, 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 oh bro. No, no, now we're going to... Bro, I wish oh, every fighter would show you pick like Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> if, if you end up fighting damn Duran, <laughs> Hearns, Hagler... <laughs> bro, like, really? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, the second Hearns fight, the third Duran fight... And those, those are oh no. The second Hurts fight was was dope. It's it, it's just yeah, I, was, I was gonna say whoa, 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 like, what? Damn, I, that's what I, that was a classic fight, bro. Yeah, third shit. Durant fight. Was shit, I I like the fucking the second um, fight better than the first fight. Yeah. <laughs> no no cap. I, I watched the second fight more than the first. Yeah. Now now of course now you no know, he tried to cherry pick Terry Norris though. That's for damn sure. You know and. He, Got his ass. How, how, how is that what? a cherry pick? How, 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 is, how is Terry Norris a cherry pick? Like, what the <laughs> Terry, Terry Dude, Norris like, yo, a, yo, no. Chin. That's why Terry Norris has a weak chin. That's exactly why. I mean. <laughs> but you gotta get through. I mean, you I and, you're, and you're already past your prime before. by like, yeah. what, 12 years? Yeah. Yeah, a Come prime, a uh, prime chinny Terry Norris. Who got I didn't Jackson. Hold on, but you said prime. Yeah. Kenny. Oh, 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 okay. oh, so we're really putting holding it against him that he got iced by one of the greatest punchers ever. Like Damn skipping. <laughs> Damn skipping. And he and, and the, he, he picked, I mean like, he picked and he picked himself into an ass whooping. In in last fight too, the same well, well, then, 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 then it wasn't here. much of a it wasn't much of a pick then. If that's the, if, if, if it wasn't much of a cherry pick then. Like I said though, I mean it, well that was a failed cherry pick. <laughs> I mean do I guess, guess Kamacho was a cherry pick too. Yeah. Well no, that was that was just ego. He shouldn't have fought that was that was the whole number. money grab. That's fight. not really a cherry pick. I don't know. I mean cause I'm hearing a whole bunch of shit cherry picks tonight. I mean, like yeah. I said, Sugar Ray, picked, he, he picked around, you know, when it was convenient for him. And it caught up to him eventually. Wow, an A-side oh. superstar who fights pound for pound competition and top contenders. He 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 cherry picked. Wow, okay, damn. Like, jeez, yeah. I, I want to throw like yeah. one of my tote lockers full of VHS boxing tapes at you right now. Yeah. I don't even, I, I, I have these fights. What's, 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 what's next? No, no, not for you to watch them, nigga. Just to throw it at you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Apparently, you wouldn't watch them if you said this shit. <laughs> or, or you haven't watched your own? Damn. Hey, oh, man, I couldn't believe this nigga saying this yeah. shit. Like, really? The fuck going on? Like, but yeah, yeah, no, I, mean, I feel like just ending the podcast now. <laughs> 
But that could be another conversation for another time, though. Yeah. Let me. Nah, we not having that conversation. Yeah. This, <laughs> nah, I, this nigga didn't need his Wheaties. The, I, he didn't need yeah. enough Wheaties growing up. <laughs> yeah, like, I, stand, I, I stand by what I said, God damn it. Yeah. He like, man, he cherry picked Mayweather, dad, too. <laughs> <laughs> He cherry picked uh, Mickey Ward trainer too. <laughs> He's gonna name everybody. <laughs> like I said, I mean, I stand by what I said. But anyways, but yes, you know, Taco Tito and Cali Fly, you know, and you know, this is for um, the WBA Super Flyweight title. Now, as we all know, Taco Tito, we all know the story on him. I um, mean, do one titles from 105 to 115. But former it, pound for pound number one in the world. Yeah, and then the one guy that most people don't give a lot of credit to because simply because he's a you know he's fought he fights in the lighter weight. Yeah, and, and, and I think ninety percent of boxing fans didn't see his prime. Yeah. yeah. So a lot. Of, so I just say like ninety percent of boxing fans shut the fuck up when evaluating this guy's career. Yeah. Touche. <laughs> Touche. Or, or, or we'll be having a podcast and you'll be sounding like Pat just did 10 minutes ago. <laughs> he, he cherry picked Brian Valora. He moved up and cherry picked Qu- uh, Quadras. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> but yes, and as I mentioned before, 115. 115 does seem to be the, the, the stop for Taco Tito in terms of what he can actually do. I mean, his first fight there, I mean, was a war with Quadras, like a very damaging war at that, which he, which he won, and he got himself is he got himself a fourth divisional belt. Then, of course, you know, came the King Sore fights, which he, well, the first one was a brutal, brutal affair. One of the best fights you've seen probably in the last five years, probably a top five fight in the last five years, in my opinion. Then he lost a zero and he lost a belt and then got knocked out by him again in the rematch. One of the top five robberies in the last five years. So it ain't no goddamn robbery. King Dude, King man, Chocolate Tito lit his sorry ass up. Fuck all that shit. You he know damn know. well he won who's that the, fight. Who's the one that went down? Chocolate <laughs> Tito went down, not not King Sword. So you saying you can't you can't win fights after being dropped? No, I mean, King Sword performed to a Oh, because I'm about to say. Oh, my God. No, the Rat Boy did not win the first fight. Stop it. Like, bro, like, like dude, like, you, you talking some bullshit tonight. <laughs> oh, uh, they, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, well, of course. They, but then, like I said, but either way, regardless of what we all think about who won, that fight was damaging Chaco Tito. It yeah. took a lot out of him, and then in the, in the rematch, he got KO'd brutally. And, and you, know, you know what? Losing a decision in a fight like that takes out more of you than winning that shit. I mean, it was... I kind of go back and forth on the first fight taking... A, I mean, it did take a toll on him, but I think it was it was going to happen eventually because he just... Yeah. The, wear, the wear and tear with the weight that he was moving up in, it, it, was, it was bound to happen. Yeah, and, and, like, and this type of style too, because like, like Chocolate Tito, like yeah, he was he's one of the was, best pressure fighters we've had in boxing. He he was he was, he was bound he, he was bound to suffer a Vic Darchinian type loss, unfortunately. Yeah, and like that, and that was that one fifteen. Because like I said, the Quadras fight it was as an underrated fight. I mean, Quad, Quadras and Chocolate Tito beat the shit out of each other. In a yeah, that was fight. that was a good fight. Yeah, and it, like that because it, it was bad too because Quadras himself didn't look the same after that fight either. So yeah, it's like you 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 live by the gun, you die by the gun. Like Chocolate Tito took somebody's prime. Yeah, and or he took he he took a, a, a part of their soul and then he gets his soul taken the next fight. Yeah, exactly. plus he was never plus I never thought he was really the same after his trainer died. Well, the trainer died after the second King Sword fight. Oh, I thought, I, oh I, thought he, I thought he died before that. I don't know why I thought he died before that. That's why everybody thought he wasn't even coming back because it's like you lost two losses in a row. One's a brutal KO, didn't you? Um, the trainer died. Like, yeah. uh, okay, never mind. I'm, I'm getting my timeline mixed up. That I could. You need a it. hug at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. But either way, after those fights, so Chuck Tito, I mean, he's been battling that. He's been battling injuries. He only he's only fought twice since 2017 so he, he, so for him to get a title shot now 
It's just, it's just more or less like, I mean, basically we're gonna see what Taco Tito actually has left in the yeah, tent. Yeah, that, that's what I'm actually wondering. Like, if he's, if he, if he's gonna turn back the hands of time, a la a Donaire type performance, or if it's they're just giving gonna, him his flowers now. Yeah, or, or, or if it's just gonna be an another Darchinian moment. Yeah, where he basically gets pummeled around the ring, and. And, and honestly, that's what I'm leaning towards. I mean, like I said, Chuck Tito. I hope not. I hope not. Chuck Tito is too great of a fighter to fucking have to go out like that. But yeah, but yeah. Kafai, you know, hits hard, and he he comes at you. But he, I don't see him as a finisher like that, though. No, he's not. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah and that thing is like, I mean, he he he, like, if I can can really do some damage, you know, on someone who, like, compromised like Taco Tito is right now. Right. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, it depends if, if he's not going to be scary enough because I mean, he, he does fight scary on occasion, but it depends on not if he's going to fight scary. If he doesn't fight scary, Taco Tito's in for a long night. Yeah, the early rounds going to tell us the story because if Chocolate Tito, you know, shows some glimpses of himself and he could really, you know, jab and pressure and, and, and get at dude, Cause he pressure fights with combinations, body head, all of that shit. Um, I feel like if he could get dudes scary mm-hmm. over him, he could really, you know, sweep. He could really get the fight. But if yeah. I feel like he could hurt him or bully yeah. him, yeah, it might be over. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, you, you hate to see it. I mean, because unfortunately, at the lighter weights, you know, once you once you once you're past thirty, you're like the prime goes quicker. Yeah. You know, top I mean, level fights. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're talking I mean, to that has, has had many, too many wars. I can see him coming out strong, and you find starting out like scary because he kind of he, like you see he fights scary when he's really being like challenged. I don't know. He's yeah, yeah. That, that's a perfect way to describe it. So, so I think if. I think it could be a situation where he starts out scary because I think Chocolatina will bring it in the er- in, in, at the beginning, and then we'll see if if Chocolatito can sustain it. And if he can't, then you're gonna see if I turn. I don't know. He's he seems too too front runner to me. I don't like front runner. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I ain't want to just come out and say it, but that's I get the front runner vibes from him, man. Yeah, I, I mean I do too, but I mean like, sometimes, but. If if Tito was still at a level that you know, like, at least uh, I mean, at, at a more active level, I'd be like, I say, yeah, Tito can beat this guy. But yeah, yeah I, I just think now the wear of Tito is a little bit too much right now. Um, he's I mean, he's coming back from injuries and stuff like that. I, I I just think that the end is near for him. Or maybe his body's completely healed up, and you know, maybe the rest did him good, <laughs> like it did Sugar Ray Leonard. This nigga right here. <laughs> this nigga right here. But uh, I mean, that's the only thing I could say with that. Like, who, you know, everybody's making solid points. Um, China, I don't think y'all picking Chocolate Tito to win, are y'all? I want to, but I can't do it with conviction. Same here. Because like I said, cause like I said he's, he's worn down. I mean, yeah. your, five, your, your five may be a front runner, but he's a very prime front runner. Yeah. yeah, and prime front runners could do damage. Yeah, especially. Then, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, what level of front runner are we talking? Are we talking like Amir Khan front runner or? <laughs> Damn, yeah. hold on, Amir Khan with Freddie Rhodes front runner. Oh, God. <laughs> that's that's it. Doesn't get more front runner than that, God. <laughs> But that's a hell of a front run though. Like you know, Amir Khan combos. <laughs> For for seven or for, for seven or eight rounds, <laughs> I mean either I either know, way, hundred meter dash. <laughs> I mean either way, I mean it's gonna be a hell of a fight though. That's for damn sure. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know if I can make a call on that. No prediction on that. Yeah, I know, like, because it, it, I think it's mostly just out of respect for Chapatita, mostly because like we we know that he's not he, he's fading. Yeah, I, I think my head. Oh my I, goodness! I think my head's gonna. The head is picking your five. Five. Yeah. Five. I mean, he should win. He should be the favorite, but 
you know, Chocolatito already in the Hall uh, of Fame. I don't, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't, I don't have enough. It's, it's not even, it's not even, um, you know, with Chocolatito. It's I don't have enough conviction in your fight to, to, to really pick him to like, ah, uh, because Chocolatito might stand the test of time, and it's just like, uh, I don't know. It might be a the zone draw. <laughs> we the zone doesn't do draws. They do bad decisions. So. <laughs> So yeah, Dennis Hogan. Yeah, good performance. <laughs> Loss. Damn. Good job. Good effort. Good effort, though. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, right, it, yeah, but yeah, that will be that will be an interesting fight to watch. And then the third fight, and the third title fight. Oh, well, that goes the second title fight, but the third main fight would be at is at the flyweight level division below. Um, mm. We have. Um, we have uh, Julio Cesar Martinez, you know, who's fresh off his flyweight title win uh, on the undercard of Danny Jacobs and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. You know, and that was the fight of the night, and he'll be defending his first, uh, he'll make his first defense of that title against an Englishman, Jay Harris. Uh, Jay Harris, like I said, I think it's only fought once in America. I think it was, yeah, what? No, no, it was in America, but he was one of the ESPN cards. Where he, he where he got rid of one of top ranks new prospects uh, from the Olympics, Patty Barnes, in about four rounds, uh, put him in reti- early retirement. So I mean, he he can fight. He he throws hands and whatever. But Martinez is an elite body puncher. Yeah. I mean, basically, Martinez made a name for himself on the undercard of um, of Luke Campbell and uh, Lomachenko. Uh, where seemingly he did win the belt the first time where he bodied the cat um, on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yo, he beat that dude's ass, bro. Yeah, he beat that dude's ass, but unfortunately... Dude, when... they didn't even want it. Like, rematch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when dude took the knee, he bodied him with a body shot. And so we all think, I was like, oh, shit, this nigga's about to be champion. But they had... They, they, for the rare times in boxing, they actually did instant replay. <laughs> they, you they already knew Hearn, Hearn was coming out with that. Yeah. Fuck it, they should do more of that, god damn it. Yeah, it was fucked up though, because but then um and then after that one, yeah, like I said, you know, the guy Charlie Edwards, he didn't want it no more. He didn't want to run that back. Yeah, I just hate when they use it on a on somebody who got their ass whooped. hmm Yeah, like I mean, he, I'm looking at it like dude with a loss anyway, like Yeah, so in that case he dropped the belt and he has he hasn't fought since. <laughs> So, like I said, um, so Damn. Martinez actually went and picked up the belt. So, I mean, here we are. I mean, do you belong to him anyway? Shit. Yeah, <laughs> eventually he got the belt in the end. I mean, <clears throat> my thing about that fight. I mean, I, th- I, I mean, I think Martinez is gonna body him the same way, but I do think it's gonna be a good little scrap back and forth for as long it's as just the, like the opener, right? Uh, of the main card, yes. It's like the yeah, it's the opener. Oh, damn, I'm gonna see a, a serious fade. Yeah. Ooh, I, I'm expecting a very serious fade in that card. And I expect Martinez to win. Um, yeah, they gotta get a stop. They gotta stop the world from talking about Wilder and Fury. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so y'all, y'all gotta, that's what's on the line right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that, that's, I mean, that's what they gotta do, to, you know, just to make sure, like, you know, no one is mentioned. And I hope they don't mention. Uh, Tyson Fury and Wilder on all over the car uh, on the broadcast because you know the zone's uh, broadcast team is <sighs> struggle, yeah, struggle because they be talking about things that they shouldn't even be talking about or they be stupid or they talk stupid shit, you know. And yeah, I can it's just see the force can... narrative, it's just uh, yeah, you know, it might get uglier than a masterpiece sneaker, you know what I mean? So, uh. <laughs> So, so yeah, I mean, we, I mean, I, that fight should be a good fight. I mean, a good warm-up fight. And then, of course, you know, that card also has its, you know, its prospects. I mean, well, out, outside of Joseph Parker, who's fighting, who has a showcase fight. You have Madrimal. Yeah. Mom. yeah. And, I, and I actually saw a dude fight in Providence, and God, he almost put me to sleep. Joseph Parker, I think he's past that stage of showcase fights. We don't need to fucking showcase that guy anymore. <laughs> yeah, get him a real fight now. Like, I mean, yeah. he hasn't had a real fight since the Dylan White fight. 
Yeah, so it's, it's, it's Man, weird. I felt like it was a while ago. That was a, that was a good minute. It was like that. three years ago. <laughs> so this was when Callum Smith, Caleb Smith was bodying dudes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, it's so like boxing was simpler times then. <laughs> Now it's all muddled up and crazy. Facts, you know. But yeah, but yeah, that's the card. And um, like I said, it should be a, a good night of boxing to watch. Um, and uh, but Static. like I said, Ooh. but like I said, uh, this fight though has been outshadowed by the fuckery of the aftermath between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Um, 